For the chain of responsibility pattern, I'm going to do the StarCraft example after I do a couple more simple examples first. That way I can have more fun with the StarCraft example, but still get the basics down with this simple example. So the first example is going to be basically an ATM where there's going to be a bank that has a certain amount of money based on how many hundreds, twenties, tens, fives, and ones it has, and a dude who needs some money. So this dude is going to go into the bank, ask for the money, and the bank is going to give him the amount of money he needs based on what it has. Now you can imagine doing uh, a big long if else statement, you know, if the bank has enough hundreds, then do this, if not, then do that, if it has 20s, this, that. Uh, but what we're going to do instead is offload that process onto a chain of responsibility. This means that the hundreds processors, what we're going to call it, will always come first, and it has the number one priority in this chain, meaning that if it has 100s, then you should always distribute 100s first. But then once it runs out of 100s, it's going to go to the 20s processor. And then once it runs out of 20s, the 10s, and then the 5s, and then the 1s. Uh, we set this up by making sure the 100s knows that the next link in the chain is 20s, 20s knows the next link is 10s, 10s knows that it's 5s. And then once you want the whole process to start, the 100s will start the process. And then I just put it in a while loop. While the dude still needs money and the bank still has money, then send it through this uh, this chain, this, this process of... Uh, what's called a chain of responsibility. So basically, if you look at a 100s processor, you see that the process is if the bank has 100s uh, and the dude needs more than $100, then subtract the 100 from the bank and give it to the dude. Now, if this isn't the case, if the bank either runs out of 100s or the dude needs less than $100, then uh, the process will head over to the super meaning that uh, instead of working through the hundreds, it'll find the next link in the chain. In this case, if you remember, it's the 20s, and it'll send the process on to the next link. And you can see in the 20s that if, if the bank still has 20s and the dude needs more than 20 bucks, then give him 20s. And the process continues um, until he's been completely paid off, and at that point, you know, the bank doesn't need to give them any more money. So if we look at this example uh, with 10 of each in the bank and where the dude needs $979 and we debug this, I put in some trace statements just to show where the money's going. You can see at the point where he has 900s, 320s, so 960, 970, 975, and 979. And you can see that's exactly what he requested was $979. And if you look back through the history, you can see that first he got 100, then another 100, then another 100, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then it went on to 20s, and then to 1s, and then to 10s, and 5s, and 1s. Um, we can change this, change this around a bit, make it so we only have uh, whoops, one $100 bill and maybe 50 20s then run it and you can see we reach the point where he has 143 20s 110 15 and four ones now if we break it down so there's only you know one of each but there's a thousand ones you'll see that he'll get a whole bunch of ones and there we have he has one 100, 120, 110, 15, and 844 ones. Now this also handles the case where if you don't have enough money, then it'll hit the, sorry, the bank cannot fulfill your request because the bank is completely out of money. Now I will go into more on how to build this in the next example or in the next video. And then after that, I'll start working towards a, a fun little StarCraft example. So thanks for watching.